जो भी पेट्रोलियम डीलर अभी नान गोपाल साहब ने बताया पेट्रोल करना चाहते हैं उसको रिप्लेस है कि वो विधान भाई राजू भाई आप
आराम पेट्रोल में राजू भाई आरडी पटेल साहब का स्वागत अभी हमारे बीच सरकार मैनेजर इंडियन ऑयल कॉर्पोरेशन से पीएम मोदी सर जा रहे हैं सर पूरा डिपार्टमेंट गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया गवर्नमेंट ऑफ गुजरात और यहां उपस्थित सभी लोग आपका उत्सुक हार्दिक स्वागत करते हैं सर मैं मोदी सर का स्वागत श्री नंद गोपाल सर टर्मिनल मैनेजर अभिवृत्ति
नंदुमल सर का स्वागत विनोद आपको बताया था ताइलैंड में क्या हो रहा है और यादव सर का स्वागत राजू भाई करेंगे राजू भाई और इंजन पर हम और 
तुम्हारा कंप्यूटर बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद और इसमें आपका और रिलेशन मेजरमेंट निकल सकता दोनों सहयोग होता है तभी हम थ्योरिटी परफेक्ट और क्वांटिटी हो सकते हैं बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद प्रोग्राम को आगे बढ़ाते हैं मैं अग्रवाल सर से रिक्वेस्ट करूंगा सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट से हमारे संयुक्त ऑफिस डिपार्टमेंट के सेक्रेटरी और सचिव जो हमारे साथ काम कर रहे हैं वो हमें हेल्प करेंगे और वर्ल्ड लीगल मेट्रोलॉजी डे का पोस्टर लिस्ट करेंगे थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर भाई मुझे बोलने का मौका मिला हम तो हाँ और क्या कर रहे हैं क्या सही कर रहे हैं हम लोगों को ठीक कर सकते हैं सबसे पहली बात तो मैं बता दूं बाय कंपनी है मेट्रो लेम जिंदा है इधर मेट्रो लॉज है हमारा एक छोटा किराने का शॉप के बारे तो कोई भी हमारे जिंदा किसी से परिवार से जुड़ा है वो हमारा इसके जुड़ा है और उसके
उसके बाद हम लोग आपस में इंपॉर्टेंट क्या है मैं ये समझता हूं कि आपको क्या प्रॉब्लम है आप अपनी बात कहें और निकल जाए उसका कोई फायदा नहीं क्या प्रॉब्लम है आप बताए और हमें किस तरीके से आपका क्या हेल्प करनी है वो हम लोग बताए कि हम बहुत सारा कोविड टाइम लोगों को नहीं था 
हमारा एक समाज था हमारा एक संस्कृति था एक कल्चर था क्या हम कहीं उसे बहुत दूर तो नहीं जा रहे बहुत ज्यादा मेटलिस्टिक तो नहीं होते चले जा रहे क्या इस सब जब फैक्टर हमें अभी जरूरत है तो बिना रिसर्च के लिए जो भी चीजें हमें देखनी पड़ेगी क्या स्टैंडर्ड को चेंज करने की जरूरत है क्या स्टैंडर्ड नया लेकर दिया है और नया
जैसे हमारा फ्रीडम हुआ अठारह दिन जैसे हमने सबसे पहले सबसे पहला एक्ट पार्लियामेंट के पास हुआ इस 1956 के एक्ट के बाद बहुत सारी चीजें हुई लेकिन उस समय का पूरी कंट्री में एक एक्ट नहीं हुआ करता था ये सारा बॉम्बे हुआ करता था तो बॉम्बे एक्ट हो करता था ग्रेटर मेजर्स एक्ट बॉम्बे ग्रेटर मेजर्स एक्ट क्या ग्रेटर मेजर्स एक्ट बॉम्बे के अंदर पूरा एरिया हुआ करता था अहमदाबाद के अंदर पूरा एरिया हुआ करता था फिर सारे कन्वेंशन ऑन ट्वेंटी एथ मे to welcome uh, all from npl state governments from our iilm ranchi uh, different uh, rrsls uh, people who have joined to basically uh, once again uh, ashutosh aap audible hain कितने लोग कनेक्टेड हैं हेलो वहाँ पर अहमदाबाद में कम से कम 300 से ज्यादा लोग जो है एक जगह आपकी आवाज आ रही थी आपकी आवाज आ रही थी हमारी नहीं जा रही मतलब फिजिकल प्रेजेंस भी है और डिजिटल मोड में भी है दोनों हाइब्रिड मोड टोटल टोटल एक हजार से ज्यादा हो जाएंगे सवाल कनेक्टिविटी और भी ज्यादा तो पता लगा पता है। आ, तो तो Uh, namaskar and a very good morning to all who have joined uh, in this hybrid uh, mode uh, this conference on uh, the world 
Meteorology Day. Uh, May 20 is celebrated as World Meteorology Day across the countries. Uh, this was in recognition of signing of Meter uh, Convention on 20th May 1875 and thus began the formal international collaboration in metrology. Each year, World Metrology Day is organized and celebrated jointly by the International Bureau of Weights and Measures and the International Organization of Legal Metrology with the participation of the national organizations responsible for metrology. World Metrology Day is an annual event during which more than 80 countries celebrate the impact of measurement on our lives. In India, National Physical Laboratory is associated with B, uh, BIPM for metrology, that is science of measurements and legal metrology. And Department of Consumer Affairs is associated with OIML for global harmonization of the legal metrology for trade and commerce. The theme for World Metrology Day 2022 is metrology in digital era. This theme was chosen because digit, digital technology is revolutionizing our community and uh, one of the most exciting trends in society is actually its growing impact. Across the world, national metrology institutes continual, uh, continuously advance measurement sciences by developing and val validating new measurement techniques at necessary level of sophistication. Uh, the World Metrology Day recognizes and celebrates the contribution of all people that work in intergovernmental and national metrology organizations and institutes throughout the year. So I take uh, this opportunity to once again welcome uh, everyone who has joined and especially uh, Secretary Department of Consumer Affairs. Uh, I would sir request you now to uh, kindly uh, give your inaugural and to address release, uh, sir, and to also release uh, the posters. Oh, let's, let's poster. Yes. Yes. Okay. Aha, welcome, welcome. So, this is the digital era. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for your kind support. Sir, I would like to introduce uh, with my gathering uh, our Honorable Secretary, Sri Rohit Kumar Singh Ji, who is an IS officer of 1990, 1989 batch from Rajasthan, Kedar. He is basically a technocrat and uh, a bureaucrat who is uh, having graduate in electrical engineering from IIT, Paras Hindu University. He completed his master's from Claxton University in New York, USA, before joining IES, and uh, he has obtained master's from Harvard University, USA. At BHU, he received Doctor's Outstanding Merit, Merit Award, Director's Merit Award, Outstanding Merit Award in 1982 and 83, and the Distinguished Alumnus Award recently in December 2021. At Harvard University, he was honored as Lucius and Little Fellow 2004 for outstanding academic performance and commitment to public service. He has worked extensively and provided leadership at the middle and senior levels in Government of India and in the state government of Rajasthan across departments that is National Highways, Medical and Health, Home, Information Technology, Finance, Commercial Taxes, Urban Infrastructure Development, Road Transport, Rural Development, Cultural and Information and Public Relations. He led the government initiative of reviving public-private partnership in national highways via key policy initiatives like the hybrid NET model through appropriate risk allocation among the public and private partners. He also successfully led the initiative of asset transfer model that resulted in one of the largest FDI in the highway sector amounting to USD 1.5 billion, one of the first successful asset modernization in India. 
as additional chief secretary of the department of medical health and family welfare in rajasthan during the first wave of covid-19 in year 2020 he developed and deployed the bilwara model of ruthless containment to successfully manage the covid upsurge in rural and urban hot spots across rajasthan sir thank you very much for your kind support and helping us blessing us on this world metrology day will certainly help uh, looking towards you for future support thank you very much sir secretary sir please a very good morning to all of you my colleague sitting here in new delhi and my colleague sitting uh, all across the country and mr julian haller uh, who is also linked on the vc first of all let me congratulate you on the world metrology day and uh, it's a it's a great occasion to celebrate because you know sometimes in when we are busy with the usual work we forget the importance of metrology and i was just <clears throat> thinking about it this morning and realized that you know when the when we converted ourselves from a primitive society to a structured society i think the biggest role played was of metrology because unless you measure things unless you know you are able to transact things which are measured and i think the the biggest idea behind measurement is the trust because if we if i say something is 1 meter and if the other party also thinks it is 1 meter then it has to be based on a trust which is automatically derived from these standard measures so i think our conversion from a primitive society to a developed society metrology has played a big role and we must honor and respect everybody who has been involved in developing the standards measures and the individuals and the businesses who helped propagate this in a very systematic and systemic way now as madam additional secretary mentioned the this year's theme is digital metrology i mean this audience need not be told that the whole world is trending uh, turning digital and even in terms of uh, the transactions although the e-commerce i was just looking at data transactions in india in terms of retail are only 8 to 9% but i think very soon they will be taking over uh, the number of 20 and 25% because the way it is increasing exponentially now as we have more and more <coughs> digital transactions and the world emerges more digital and starts trusting the digital thing i think the digital metrology role becomes even more important just like music when we change from analog to digital we suddenly saw an explosion in how music is being you know held how people are collecting music how people are using music but i must also caution you that when things turn digital it is very good it is very easy in terms of access replication usage propagation but it is also fraught with challenges and we see the challenges every day that you know the manipulation is also easy everybody does not think alike there are some black sheep who will always be there who will want to game the system who will want to take adverse advantage of the system now the point i am trying to make here is in the digital world it is easy to manipulate the system when our devices let's say 10 15 years back when they were not connected either through wireless or wire technologies it was a little difficult to manipulate a device but now with all kinds of connectivity prevalent whether it is wireless bluetooth or any wired or any other form of connectivity the moment you are able to access a device in a wireless remote manner then the probability of manipulation becomes very high so people on this side who work for the government in work for maintaining a disciplined robust system our responsibilities and challenges increase and we will have to develop capacities we will have to develop knowledge we will have to create systems where we are able to meet this challenge in a robust way because uh, in this same room yesterday the same group of people we were discussing about you know digital measurements in a petrol pump a petrol dispensing unit now when somebody sees those numbers changing in a digital way automatically the trust increases but you know we have to go behind the technology and ensure 
that the trust which is coming at the outer layer is actually trustworthy and whether that system is you know not being manipulated so i think that's a big challenge and i'll give you another example on which i have done a study on electronic voting machines and uh, i've done a very detailed study in one of the world's most reputed institutes on how india's electronic voting machines are not manipulable and how they are robust and you know all the talk after every 3 4 years of you know ki evm manipulate ho gayi all that is not possible the big reason it is not possible which came out in our study at harvard university was they are not because they are not connected yeah. they are not able to they don't facilitate remote access but as i said 2 minutes back now because everything is getting connected so our challenges are tougher our challenges are bigger and we must prepare ourselves to meet those challenges because as george bernard shaw said the thief is the artist policeman is just a critic so the thief is you know always ahead of us thief meaning anybody who wants to game the system and police meaning who people who want to protect the integrity of the system so my request is uh, once again uh, while everything is getting digital we must also prepare ourselves and this is as everybody knows this is a knowledge era so your strength is not the danda not you know being able to imprison someone the strength is knowledge unless you my colleagues and everybody who is listening unless we are prepared ourselves in a superior way where our knowledge is more than the guy who is trying to manipulate we will not be able to do good to the government the system and the society but on that a sort of little negative note but i still want to congratulate you it's a great day and uh, i'm a student of science and engineering and i know how important it is to measure we we did engineering we were taught how transducers you know convert the measurement differences in temperature or any other physical quantity into numbers how you know analog has turned digital but as i said the road ahead is full of challenges and unless we build our capacities the road will continue to be bumpy thank you very much and congratulations once again thank you very much sir for your motivating words certainly we are looking towards you the whole country is looking towards you all we are having the number of technocrats even you have spoken about the petrol pumps we have the petrol pump dealers and the all three oil companies sitting here and they are just listening that what has what next step we have to take thank you very much sir we will be looking towards you for next for your continuous help thank you sir now i will request uh, dr julian who is actually the scientist from ptb germany now he is in the sartorius and he is having lot of experience about i know that uh, in the sir we are having one international oim oml uh, digital transformation group under which we are working for the digitalization of the whole metrology system in the world and the, the, this dr julian is also one of the member and uh, we i have requested him to kindly speak something about what is digitalization how we are thinking about the digitalization of the metallurgy certificates dr julian please can you speak can you start dr julian santoshi please give the screen uh, share uh, right to dr julian so you can hear me already yes we can we can please okay. yes we can okay and there's the share button so now you see my presentation Does that work? It is. It is. We can see. We can see. Perfect. So, um, dear ladies and gentlemen, the organizers, dear Mr. Secretary, dear Ashutosh, um, I would like to thank you all for the possibility to um, speak at this event for the invitation. It's a pleasure for me and also an honor to present you some of the. aspects that um we from sartorius um connect to this topic metrology in the dig digital era um i guess we all agree um that especially in the last two and a half years digitalization has accelerated actually more than we expected and more than we wanted and each time we do work on metrological topics via digital collabor collaboration tools or in online events like right now 
we are already talking about mythology in the digital era. So there has been some progress, of course, in the last 10, 15 years, and as mentioned, accelerated in the last two and a half years. But nevertheless, I would like to focus actually on mainly two topics, um, which the, where the first one is digitalization in applied mythology, and I like to focus there on the digital calibration certificate, which is a big topic in the calibration world. And then also, of course, um, about digitalization and legal mythology, uh, with mainly showing two future developments that we are also working on together with others in respective committees. And in the end, I would just like to show you some selected projects and associations that mainly deal with this big, big topic, digitalization and mythology. So to start, I would like to focus on digitalization in applied mythology and namely the digital calibration certificate, the DCC. I guess you've all heard about that already. Um, let me just show you a slide showing the general concept, which was developed by the PTB, the German National Mythology Institute, I think in 2017 already, and has evolved and has been improved since then. So there's also already the version 3.1, I guess, of this respective scheme. On the right side, you see, uh, probably you can hardly see it, but actually this is what it would finally look like. It will be an XML um, coded structured file with the respective data that you currently see on calibration certificates. And on the left side, you see the general concept of this XML file. Um, the idea is to have a hierarchical structure so, of course, you need administrative data, like who did it, when was it done, what was calibrated, and so on. The next um, shell or structure point being the results of the calibration. And then some room for comments, of course, or non-regulated information to be provided from the calibration laboratory to the customer. And there's also a shell um, that is foreseen to provide the current document as we all know it as a PDF, just coded in XML so that easily the document can be seen as, as we all are used to it. And of course, as this was developed um, by the PTB, um, we will not be surprised that respective norms and standards like the SI, the VIM, the GUM, the CODATA, and the 1725 are of course respected in this respective concept. So um, if you're not familiar with XML, um, the basic concept of XML, and XML means extensible markup, markup language, um, is that you have more or less a text file, which you can see on the right as a simple example, which follows a respective dedicated scheme file, which you see on the left side, that's the so-called XSD file. And this XSD file, the schema, it defines what must be in the respective XML and what can be, so mandatory and optional elements. And of course, also some restrictions like what kind of element does this have to be? Will it be a number or a string or a link or whatever? And um, how many times, for example, may this occur? And the big advantage is once you create XML files that are compliant with the respective XSD file. It will be easy to harmonize, um, have some, some importing mechanism programmed to import any XML file that follows this particular scheme. And of course, it can also, the XML file can also be validated automatically. There are online free services for that against the schema file to make sure this XML file, this DCC really follows the underlying schema. Now, what is the use case um, of a DCC? And let us just have a look at the current handling of calibration certificates. And when I explain this, please keep in mind, um, we alone as Sartorius issue several 100,000 calibration certificates per year. And we are not the only 
calibration laboratory in the world. So I guess there must be millions of calibration certificates per year worldwide. So what happens at the moment in, in the very most cases is even though we as a calibration lab create the certificates and we, we record the data and do the calculations in a software on a PC, in the end, we create a PDF or even a hard copy of the calibration certificate that is then sent via email or postal service or handed out personally to the customer. The customer will have a look at the document. He will check, has the calibration lab really done what I wanted? Are the information that I want on the calibration certificate, are they complete? Um, and also maybe he will check the results, maybe check against his acceptance criteria, whatever. So he will have manually to look at the document. And if he still have so has some time left, um, he might enter some of the data into his um, laboratory equipment management system. But of course, only the raw or only the administrative data, like yes, calibrated or the date, um, but usually not the results because that would take too much time. And just keep in mind, many of our customers do not have one or two instruments, but they have 300, 400, 500 instruments. And this poor guy, so has a lot of work to do. So what um, in reality usually happens is he will check it and then just store it in a respective folder for his next audit so he has it available. Now this whole process of course is really error prone. Um, this human can make errors in checking and also in transferring the data. It takes of course a lot of time for this person and it more or less hinders further functionalities of the data. So what we expect the future to be like is um, that we are not really talking anymore about handling of calibration certificates, but rather about handling of calibration data. So the calibration lab um, with their software creates not a PDF, but an XML file with the data that then can be sent via email or via cloud services or interfaces platforms to the customer where the customer has a respective system, a program, a software that checks the calibration data and the administrative data, and then transfers it to his further, to his further systems where there are, of course, several functionalities that can be imagined. Um, and yeah, you see the difference. There should be no errors from this poor human. Um, of course, time saving, and we are really talking about a lot of time and finally about money here. And of course, the availability of the data enables further functionalities. And let me show just some of the functions that would be easily possible with this process. For example, if you have the calibration data automatically transferred or imported into your system, um, you can easily store or monitor or analyze the calibration history of your test equipment. So you have the results over time and you could have some um, analysis. Does my instrument, is it getting worse? Um, is there a tendency? Should I be aware that probably next time um, my device might be out of tolerance, whatever. So you can let software do that, um, which is an annoying task if you do it personally or manually. Also, you can, of course, optimize calibration calib uh, intervals. You probably all know the respective ILAC. I think it's G8 paper or P8. I'm not sure at the moment, sorry, um, which gives valuable advice of how to optimize calibration intervals based on the data. But this, of course, requires that you enter the calibration data that you have it available. But if you have it available via this process in your system, it will be very easy to set up an algorithm to say, well, if there was not much change between the two last calibrations, I can increase my calibration interval. While if I have significant changes between two subsequent calibrations, I would have to shorten that interval. And of course, again, this can be done by an algorithm. You don't have to do that manually. And the next use case, 
imagine you receive uh, calibration data where some of the data are out of your specifications and do not imagine a weighing instrument here, but maybe rather imagine a thermometer. So in the lower range, lower temperature range, and in the upper temperature range, your device is found in the calibration to be out of specification, but in the middle range, it is in specification. Now you can smartly um, use still this, still use this thermometer for applications where you only want to measure in that range. So you can optimize uh, and adapt the usage of your test equipment to process requirements and to process um, values. Yeah, so you don't have to throw away or to repair the thermometer. You can still use it for that range. And this again, of course, if you if you use not only one or two thermometers, but 100 or 200 thermometers in your production, for example, again, an algorithm can do that for you and say, well, you can use this thermometer at place X, Y, Z because it will be sufficient for that application. And also, for example, imagine us as a manufacturer of weighing instruments. Um, of course, you can imagine that we have, I don't know, to be honest, hundreds of thousands of weights in our production because uh, we have to test our balances with weights. We have to adjust them and all of that. And of course, um, if, if you have the calibration data of the weights available electronically in your system, it would be easy for your manufacturing enterprise system, for example, to use the corrected true values of the weights for adjustment, controlling, whatever, Nobody has to type in the values manually, but they will be automatically available. And um, I just used uh, search for respective icons in our icon database for any further functionality that you can imagine. You might know that there are several um, processes or, or systems for connectivity, like LabTwin, SmartLab, LabOS, and Reliance, and I think there are hundreds, millions of connectivity programs and, and things. Um, and also a digital, let me call it a digital metrology twin would be possible, which I will present on the next slide. So using our slogan, of course, um, we think that the possibility to use calibration data is just simplifying progress for all involved persons for the stakeholders. So um, as mentioned, just have a brief example for this digital metrology twin, which was uh, set up as a demonstrator example by the PTB for weights. So what happens here is um, this tool, this little tool can import a DCC, a digital calibration certificate of a weight and can calculate the uncertainty for, for using this weight based on additional information that you enter, for example, the temperature, humidity, whatever, also the cleaning status, you can enter everything. And once this is done, uh, you just click on start and the program actually using Monte Carlo simulation calculates the uncertainty if you use this particular weight. And again, of course, this would also be possible if you manually enter the calibration data of the weight, but you will probably not do it because it will be too much work. So this is just one example how we could have digital metrology twins, digital adapted uncertainty calculations for any test equipment using the DCC. Now, what is the status of the DCC um, in, let's say, our world for, for weights and weighing instruments? So there is currently has been published an expert report of the German DKD. Um, which describes instructions on how to use the DCC schema to create a digital calibration certificate for weights. And it also includes exam XML examples of DCCs for a single weight and a set of weights. And if you're quick enough, you can just use this QR code uh, to scan and you will be directly led to, the respective, to this respective expert report. But if you search just in the um, open access repository of the PTB, you will also find this um, document or you can ask me, contact me and I can send you the link. Um, I 
just would like to mention this has been published. Um, this is a first instruction really on how to create DCC for weights. But we think that the specifications therein and the, the um, instructions given there may still change in the future because this whole DCC topic still is very young. So we expect to have general, um, not weight specific conventions. So conventions for all types of measuring instruments and measuring um, types in the future. So we expect there might be changes. So don't name me on that document if it changes in half a year, one year, but it is a first uh, approach and a first way to create such a DCC. For weighing instruments, actually, um, also a DKD expert group has been set up, um, which I actually have the pleasure to lead. And you see on the right side that we have um, prominent participants in that expert group concerning the weighing world, um, including the PTB as the inventors of the DCC, Euramet, we have a Euramet DCC ambassador in this group, us, Metal Toledo, Bizerba, Minebea, Kern, and Efna as a manufacturer of weights. And our goal is actually to quickly pub, uh, publish a simple XML example of a DCC for a Navi according to the calibration guide Euramet CG18. And actually, um, don't nail me on a schedule or on a timeline, but uh, we will have another meeting this afternoon and we hope that we can publish such a simple example quite soon. And after that has been done, actually we plan to publish further explanatory documentation and extended examples, including um, conformity statements, interpretations, um, and, and several options that calibration certificates offer at the moment. So much about digitalization in applied methodology and especially about the DCC, now coming to digitalization and legal methodology. And there are several aspects possible and that one can imagine, but I would like to smart on to, to focus on two aspects where one is smart legislation and the other one is cloud services. So starting with smart legislation, just imagine the life cycle of a measuring instrument in the legal methodology world. So what we and <clears throat> also other manufacturers, of course, do already in the development phase of a new instrument that we want to develop is we uh, implement the legal requirements already in our user requirement specification. So that from the very beginning, the product developers know these are requirements that they have to fulfill um, with this instrument. And once the first prototypes or whatever are available, we of course test the prototypes or the uh, development against the respective acceptance criteria defined in the URIs. Now, once we have developed that instrument, of course, we have to get approval or approvals. Um, so we are in the approval phase. So we apply for approval, we submit our documentation, um, the respective documentation and then testing results um, are assessed by the notified body or speaking about OIML um, about from, from the issuing authority. Um, testing, assessing, and in the end, of course, we get a respective national approval certificate. Now we start the production phase um, where we perform zero series testing to make sure that the serial production really matches still the requirements that um, the prototypes fulfill. So again, we tend to test devices against all these requirements. We have to perform conformity assessment of every single device and also later on in the lifetime of a product we perform product audits to make sure that after one two three four years still the product quality is the same and still all requirements are fulfilled and in the end of course the customer the user has the device so he has usually depending on the national specifications or requirements he has to register his device 
at a verification authority. It will be monitored in many countries by market surveillance. It would have to be periodically verified or inspected. And of course, we might publish a soft software update um, after one to three years. So there must or can be a software update. And this, of course, first has to be included in a revision of the approval and then be rolled out to the users of the instruments. And of course, um, an instrument can also be broken. So we have repair of verified instruments and respective inspection reports. So a lot of steps in the life cycle of an instrument in legal metrology. But if you think about that, you will have a lot of information that is basically remaining the same through all, through all of these steps. Um, so for example, a software version, okay, that can change at a certain stage in use. But for example, the MPE, the maximum permissible error, will stay the same for the whole life cycle of the instrument. The compliance with the requirement ABC, the date of the conformance assessment will start somewhere here, but remain the same for the rest of the life of this instrument. And also some, let's say, diary information about verifications, repairs, updates. And what we are um, longing for, uh, um, hoping for actually, is that one day we have respective unique identifiers to describe this information in a machine readable way. And in this example, I use the syntax of the DCC, of the Digital Calibration Certificate, to just demonstrate the verification scale interval, for example, can be represented in such a DCC style way. Um, and of course, this could be used through the complete life cycle of the instrument. So how does that go along with um, smart legislation? Let me just show that based on one particular example. So I took one particular requirement from OIML R76 for non-automatic weighing instruments, which is this requirement of paragraph 4125, just as one example. Um, and as you see, it says an instrument may be fitted with an automatic or semi-automatic span adjustment device. This device shall be incorporated inside the instrument. External influence upon this device shall be practically impossible after securing. Now, if you take a close look, you will find this is actually not a requirement, but this is rather three requirements. The first one saying, if the instrument has a uh, span adjustment device, it shall be automatic or semi-automatic. If it has one, it shall be incorporated inside this instrument, That's the second one. And third one, external influence, uh, may be practically, shall be practically impossible. So we have three requirements in this one paragraph. And you could, of course, again, use such a XML style syntax to provide the respective information to issuing authorities and notified bodies. So for this um, first requirement that such a span adjustment device, that will be some kind of XML element, for example, um, shall be automatic or semi-automatic, and in this example, it would be semi-automatic. You can easily describe that, and that could be easily validated against the respective requirement. For the second one, actually, it shall be incorporated inside the instrument. It will probably not be sufficient for issuing authorities to just say, yeah, it's inside, but we would need some evidence for that. So you could easily link to a document using a unique ID, for example, um, giving an evidence and description how this is realized inside the instrument. And of course, for, let's say, securing protection of features or uh, functions, you might also re have to refer to, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> to several evidences, several documents. So all of that would be possible with such a respective um, style format. So what we hope for actually is that in the future, respective OML recommendations become such smart documents where we can easily refer to every single requirement. So 
Now I would like to talk about cloud services and how they can contribute to digitalize legal metrology. Um, so what we hope for is actually the development of an internationally accepted platform or environment to handle and validate digital certificates and processes like um, there already was a first approach with a European metrology cloud. And of course, from a manufacturer side, um, we would hope for the possibility to accelerate approval processes using this cloud services. So just imagine um, we would ex have, have to submit an expanded application form to the issuing authority where we list all national approvals that we want to obtain for this product. And um, all respective national authorities would have direct access to the relevant documentation, test results, evaluations, communication. Um, so that in the end, we only have one approval process. And let me show that in a bit more detail how that would work. So what we currently do is the following. We submit our documentation, usually in PDF, from it to our issuing authority, that is usually the PTB. And now at the PTB, a person checks, is the documentation complete? Is every requirement um, considered and every requirement fulfilled? And if that is done, so he has to manually check a lot of things, um, he will issue an OML CS certificate. So then we're happy, but we have, of course, not at the end. What we'll do now as a manufacturer is we take this OML CS certificate, possibly together with other documentation, and submit it to national authorities. And I hope I bought the right symbol for India from the India uh, from, from the internet. And again, completeness will be checked, correctness will be checked, requirements will be checked, and then we get a respective national approval for India, or of course we do the same in parallel for China and other countries. So you see a very long process until we get the CS certificate, and then again, the process to get national certificates from this OML certificate. So what we hope, what we would hope for in the future is actually we submit digital information, and I guess we still will have to submit, of course, also documentation in PDF format to some cloud service, to some OML cloud service, where, for example, completeness can be automatically checked and validated, and all respective information will be submitted or um, accessible at the same time for the PTB, the Indian National Authority, the Chinese National Authorities, and many others. So that at the same time, um, using also the automatic validations that are provided by the trustworthy cloud service of, for example, OML, the national authorities will have to do much less of validating and checking, and then can issue the respective national approvals or in our case, the PTB will not issue a German national approval, but a European approval. So that is what we hope for for the future. Um, and as mentioned, cloud services would be an option to, to provide that. And of course, as the honorable director um, said that in the beginning, um, such a cloud service can also be used to have some trustworthy connection to particular measuring instruments. Like you could provide services like remote verification of measuring instruments, remote software updates, remote checking, um, remote verification of, of existence of the instruments and you know, remote planning for market surveillance. When do I check which instrument? So a lot of um, options that would be available once we have a trustworthy cloud service uh, established by a trustworthy provider. So coming to the third part, actually a very short part, uh, I would just, there are millions probably of projects and associations dig, dealing with digitalization, also with digitalization and metrology, but I would just like to, to raise your focus to some of them. Um, so the first one actually would be the OML digitalization task group and Ashutosh Agarwal mentioned that in the beginning, uh, I had the pleasure to give a 
the presentation at this task group uh, on Wednesday, I guess it was, and I was happy to see you there. Um, so we always are happy um, if as many countries um, are active and contribute to these respective um, committees and to their respective uh, tasks. Because for, for us as a manufacturer, it is important that we have worldwide harmonized solutions. And that will only be possible, of course, if as many countries of the world contribute to the respective projects and associations. So we are really happy to have India in the YML as an active member also in this task group. Euramed may be not too interesting for you in India, but um, also Euramed as a important, uh, as actually the Association of European Metrology Institutes, um, as an important stakeholder or association for us, as a dedicated working group on metrology for digital transformation. And they also have several tasks and projects running and events. So it might be worth uh, to have a look at their website what will happen in the future. IMECO is, I think, dealing with a lot of projects um, on digitalization, but I would just like to raise your um, attention to one particular event. So there will be a hybrid conference in September in Berlin or online, um, which is metrology for the digitalization conference will be the main topic. And um, I think there will be many stakeholders involved, many interesting projects. So if you have time in September, think about um, registering for this conference. I think it's still open for registering. And of course, I would like to also mention my former employer, the PTB, because they are really um, driving the innovation for digitalization and metrology. So they invented the DCC, the Digital Calibration Certificate. They are still working on it. And I would like to, to ask every interested person to contribute to this further development. Because again, a worldwide acceptance will only be possible if all stakeholders worldwide are included in the process and in the development. Um, and they also developed a digital SI as just the basis for the DCC and for all further processes, in my opinion, a digital SI compliant representation of um, measuring values, including uncertainty representation and all of that. So there's been done a lot of things already at PTB. Please um, just check the PTB website and you will find a respective, a lot of important information on digitalization for methodology. And with it, I would like to thank the organizers and the director again for, for having me at this event. Uh, it was a pleasure to, to present that. And I would like to thank you, all of you, for, for your time, for listening, and for your interest. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Dinian. Thanks for the presentation, under which we come to know that how the legal methodology is working in the world and how the digitization of the legal methodology is taking place, not only in the legal methodology, but in the methodology also, as you already clearly mentioned about the SI system, digital SI system. So we are all uh, considering that and uh, I know that being, the, being this international community member, certainly we will do, India will also work together and we will certainly get something to get these certificates issued digitally. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the Again, we will request you to come uh, time to time to just guide us, to just explain us what is internationally happening. Thank you very much, Dr. Julian. Actually, we have Dr. Mosman also with us. He is actually living in UP. So we have one of the province, province Uttar Pradesh. And yes, Dr. He is with uh, one of the province in uh, India and he is just delivering the talk. I will take him later on uh, with this conference. What these people are doing in Japan. 
Certainly, thank you very much. Being in the PDP Germany, I know that you have been the best in the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. हेलो आशुतोष जी मिस्टर जूलियन दीक्षित सर सर जस्ट ओवर आई जस्ट इंट्रोड्यूस यू बस एक्चुअली वी हैव द डायरेक्टर मिस्टर पीएम दीक्षित विद आस दीक्षित सर डायरेक्टर हिंदू टेक्नोलॉजी कमिटी ऑफ इंडिया सर कैन नाउ कैन यू प्लीज इंट्रोड्यूस टू लोकेशंस इन कंटिन्यू टू कॉन्फ्रेंस दीक्षित India is interested in international meetings, international level, and he is with us. Sir, that is big to us. And in the last week, we are voting on the top of the country. We have some of the experience, but the three comments, one of the technology developments came during these 10 years of experience. Sir, please speak. So, it's a great pleasure that Legal Metrology is organizing uh, this metrology day in India and uh, all this happens uh, due to the uh, best efforts of the, all the legal metrology officers, senior legal metrology officers and the kind approval of Honorable Secretary CA and uh, additional Secretary CA and this program is organized. We are very thankful to Mr. Asuto Sakarwal that uh, he has invited a lot of the peoples and in, he is doing the program in the hybrid mode. Other RSLs are also doing the programs in the different ways. And uh, ILM, uh, Indian Institute of Legal Metrology, Ranchi, which is one of the training institute in India. So they are also conducting the metrology day and uh, they are also celebrating, I think, the uh, together with uh, together we have uh, 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 um, connected our uh, hands so we become the strength and the strength of the legal metrology is very uh, important because the, we have to protect the consumer interest uh, in all the way uh, for India as well as for the world also uh, because we are celebrating um, uh, not only at the level of BIPM but it is celebrated at the level of uh, YML also and uh, we give a lot of thanks to Professor Swartz uh, who is taking the maximum interest in the uh, celebration of Metrology Day 2020. Uh, 22 Julian, uh, and uh, we also have uh, thanks to mr julian Hello. who is uh, uh, julian heller who is participating in this very programs he is our guest one of the guest and uh, for his kind words and uh, uh, whatever uh, the presentation he has given that is very valuable to the our legal metrology officers in india so so with these very words um, uh, i give thanks to all the participants and all the legal metrology officers all the controllers all the deputy controllers and deputy directors of the rrsls and the director ilm and uh, all the professors of the ilm rachi and the, uh, all the officers from central government and state government to make this very program very industry, successful industry program. and uh, i think that industries are also participating in these very programs and uh, many people who are interested in the uh, metrology and legal metrology they are also participating in these programs we may not forget any uh, uh, valuable uh, contribution from any sides. Uh, we thanks to NIC, we thanks to all the peoples who are uh, supporting us any way for making this program very successful. Thank you, Astoji.
थैंक यू आस्तु जी थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच सर थैंक यू वेरी मच सर and you are converts and certainly we are happy that you are here and uh, you are motivating sir actually we have with us this program is being organized by the government of gujarat the uh, legal metallurgy government of gujarat and in association with all the three oil marketing companies bpcl hpcl and iocl and uh, i am just the part of this uh, program with the help of uh, we have our friend mr rathor the deputy controller of gujarat so i would like to thank mr rathor and uh, our guest uh, from the oil companies who have made this uh, program actually successful otherwise uh, we will must be organizing it from a maybe from our uh, you know uh, peaceful office separately at one place but with your help we are at a very good very good place thank you very much so now we have connected with our government of up also and in government of uttar pradesh they have made organized this program in a very well manner and we are also connected with them and this uh, the, i would like to thank the controller sir mr shahi who has taken this initiative to organize this one battle this one battle this uh, one battle the program today and uh, i am also thankful to my good friend dr mas dr masamoto who is also there uh, masamoto ja, is uh, from japan international legal metallurgy we met we met him met him many times earlier dr masamoto is there i think he has already spoken unfortunately we could not Listening him because we are listening in other other participants and uh, sir we uh, as uh, now UP is also listening. We are having one of great scientists, Dr. Julian Heder, who is from Italy, Germany. And now, like uh, uh, as we have already lot of other participants, I like to share my screen in which we are just uh, discussing about the various communities and other ethnic relations. I think now my screen is able to see. It is okay. Yes, sir. We are aware that this particular conference is to bring all the stakeholders together. जैसे जैसे समय पास हो रहा है, डॉक्टर हेलन ने अभी बहुत अच्छा एक्सप्लेन किया, डॉक्टर जूलिया ने बहुत अच्छा बताया कि किस तरीके से इंटरनेशनल लेवल पे भी हम डिजिटल सर्टिफिकेट्स इश्यू करने की बात कर रहे हैं। डिजिटल सर्टिफिकेट्स का मतलब क्या है? कैसे डिजिटल सर्टिफिकेट्स इश्यू होंगे क्या उसमें करना है बेसिकली आज भी बहुत सारा देखा जाए तो सारे के सारे स्टेट मोस्ट ऑफ द स्टेट्स में आपकी रेपेज वाला सिस्टम है वो ऑनलाइन हो चुका है तो क्या होता है आप ऑनलाइन अप्लाई करते हैं ऑनलाइन फीस डिपॉजिट करते हैं और ऑनलाइन ही सर्टिफिकेट वेरिफिकेशन सर्टिफिकेट भी इश्यू हो रहा है लेकिन अभी आज के डेट में क्या है इन मोस्ट ऑफ द स्टेट्स व्हाट वी आर डूइंग हम एक पीडीएफ सर्टिफिकेट को स्कैन करते हैं और उसको कर देते हैं लेकिन जैसे जैसे टाइम पास होगा अभी हमें क्या करना है एक ऐसा सिस्टम डेवलप करना है इंटरनेशनली जहां पर एक सर्टिफिकेट को मशीन एंड ह्यूमन दोनों के दोनों रीड कर सके बेसिकली अब जो ट्रांसफर होगा वो सर्टिफिकेट का नहीं होगा तो अगर जिन्होंने बात करेक्टली बोला अब हम डेटा को ट्रांसफर करेंगे डेटा से क्या होगा कि आप भी रीड कर सकते हैं और मशीन भी रीड कर सकती है कि किस सर्टिफिकेट को दिया गया है किस इक्विपमेंट को दिया गया है कैसे रिमोट वेरिफिकेशन होगा कैसे रिमोट कैलिब्रेशन होगा ये सारा हमारा जो सिस्टम है वो चल रहा है डिजिटल टेक्नोलॉजी में डिजिटल टेक्नोलॉजी में थोड़ा टाइम लगेगा डिस्क्रिप्शन में अभी I'm just going to disconnect over here. I'm just going to disconnect over here. Hello, I'm sorry. I think I'm uh, not able to. Uh, yeah, no, everybody is here. Must uh, maybe hearing me. Are you hearing me? Sir, are you hearing me? Nah, yes, yes. We can hear you. Yes, sir. We are yeah. hearing you. Uh, my screen is my screen. My screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, yes. I, you are also very smart. Yes, yes, I'm okay. Screen share. Screen share already? Yes, yes. Second screen? Yes, sir. Okay. So, sir, what we are discussing, what is the digitalization of the digitalization of the certificates? What is the transformation? किस तरीके से रिमोट कैलिब्रेशन को या रिमोट वेरिफिकेशन को होने वाले टाइम में कर पाएंगे उसके ऊपर मैं एक्सपेक्ट करता हूँ के बाद वी विल बी हैविंग द डिजिटल सर्टिफिकेट्स अवेलेबल इन गुड कंट्रीज इन डेवलप कंट्रीज एंड जनरेशन लिविंग एपोजिट यदि हमें डिजिटल सर्टिफिकेशन करना है तो सबसे पहले 
ने डिजिटल ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन जो लीगल और ना किया है मैं आपको बता दूं कि जो इंडिया है हमारा एक ओएमएल में एक डिजिटलाइजेशन टास्क ग्रुप है जिसमें कि इंडिया भी एक मेंबर है हम उसमें ओएमएल बीआईएम सब लोग मिलकर के जो बना रहे हैं आई एम आल्सो द मेंबर ऑफ दैट कमेटी उस ग्रुप का मैं मेंबर हूं उसमें हम लोग क्या कर रहे हैं कि किस तरीके से इंटरनेशनली इन सर्टिफिकेट्स को डेवलप किया जाए अभी आई एम फ्रेंड स्लो so basically the purpose is to bring together all stakeholders and integrate ideas reflect the goals objectives and current state of particular objects to simulate the approaches and findings and the formulate the new course new projects excellent our next next one man next one dia डिजिटलाइजेशन ऑफ मेडोलॉजी डिग्री ऑफ रेगुलेशन and the uses how we will be having the regulation as well as the technology if we talk about the digital methodology it means it has the intelligent intelligent metric system for critical mechanism and for critical enterprise structure we have lab based metric instruments and we have instrumental methodology for the calibration services so these basically all the all are the parts of the digital transformation of technology will be played There should be a single point of contact, trustworthy platform, methodological administration, reference architecture, digital calibration certificates, server-based services, calibration of digital sensors, and data quality in data data quality in IoT in uh, IoT. So basically, this digital transformation is a it is a basically journey and it is not a destination. As we have here already discussed about the technology cloud, I am not going to discuss more. Similarly, this is the regulation set up for the quality infrastructure. How the manufacturer, which has the specimen design and the production, will go into the market. How the user or the customer will be in contact with the market, and how this conformity assessment and the legal methodology and the scientific methodology will be part in at the different different steps. This is a central communication element. How this notified body will look after these digitally calibrated equipment. How the digital certificate can be seen. As we are all aware, if you can just see uh, read that the QR code. If QR code की बात करें, तो QR code के अंदर से हम पूरा अपडेट ले सकते हैं. तो उसमें क्या है कि वो जो एक language है, वो उसको पढ़ रहा है QR code की. इसमें यदि इसी तरीके से मशीन में, यदि हम एक digital certificate इंडिया में इस तरीके से शुरू करते हैं कि उसके ऊपर एक QR code है. उस को रीड करने के बाद ये बताया जा सके कि ये मशीन कहां पर है किसके पास है किस एक्यूरेसी की है कब इसका वेरिफिकेशन हुआ कब स्टैंपिंग हुआ कब इस बेसिकली हम पूरा का पूरा डेटा एक मशीन का वही क्यू आर कोड मशीन के ऊपर भी लगाया जा सकता है और वही क्यू आर कोड एक सर्टिफिकेट पर भी लगाया जा सकता है पहले तो क्या होता था कि हम एक ही सर्टिफिकेट इशू करते थे और उसमें दस या पंद्रह या बीस मशीनें भी लिख दिया करते थे अभी आजकल ऐसा नहीं होता सिंगल सर्टिफिकेट हम लोग इश्यू कर रहे हैं उस सिंगल सर्टिफिकेट को भी कैसे सेव किया जाए कैसे प्रोटेक्ट किया जाए कि वो दूसरी तरीके से उसमें टैंपरिंग ना हो सके या उसको दोबारा रिव्यूज कर दिया सके वो सारी एग्जाइट चीजें हैं इसके लिए हमें क्या चाहिए रिमोट वेरिफिकेशन रिमोट सॉफ्टवेयर इंटेलिजेंस digital e verification marking and digital application for verification so basically all these the requirements are for the uh, digitalization of legal technology digitalization of calibration certificates for now what we have to do for that bring in specific expertise, uh, expertise integration data and infrastructure via a management console for more assembly we have to develop a prototype based on a reference architecture to be connected to the methodology cloud and identify the workflows which has to be integrated so basically if we have to develop this digital certification system in india we have to completely come together maybe that today there are maybe few people who are listening this word what is the digital calibration certificate so you maybe they have not learned about it they have not heard about it so first of all we have to bring this awareness this this type of digital calibration certificate can be issued for all type of being and the instruments if we talk about the legal methodology as we have already seen we are all aware that the purpose of the legal methodology is to save the the interest of consumer and to protect the 
and to protect the homogeneous uh, environment in the business. Basically, if we talk about this legal methodology, we say that all type of vague and magic instruments which are used either in transaction or protection have to be verified and stamped by the legal methodology officer. What is the transaction? Transaction may be any contract, whether for sale, purchase, exchange, or any other purpose. Exchange purpose, and similarly, we can say any assessment of loyalty, term, duty, etc., or the assessment of any work done or wages due. Protection means any data which we are taking from any of the vague or vague instrument which is used for the protection of the human being or protection of the uh, product of culture of the community. As we already know that we are the world level country, we are regularly harmonizing the international standards in our rooms in India, so that whatsoever the equipments we are using in India are at par with the international standard or very good standard of the world. There are no benefits of harmonization, and we need new technologies like gas meters, virtual meters, energy meters. So these are for electro, electric vehicle charging. So all these things, EEG, which is used for the medical, ECG, etc., all these type of vehicle measuring instruments have to be included in the in the in the part of the technology. And we talk about the package commodity. Basically, nowadays most of the commodities are being sold in packaged form. And these packaged commodities should have some of the regulations, some of the requirements should fulfill. What are these requirements? They should have they should comply the provisions of section 18 of the Legal Methodology Act, and there are some parallel provisions under the Act under Section 36. Basically, if we talk about the package community, we need some declarations on the package community. What are these declarations? Name and address of the manufacturer, the pattern of the importer, country of origin if imported, pattern or generic name of the quality, net quantity in standard unit of weight measure or number, and not be included in the taxes, unit sale price. It is a new concept of unit sale price which will be introduced from of October 2022. The earlier yeah, it was supposed to implement from 1st of April 2022. But on the interest of on the request of the industry, it has been deferred till 30th of September 2022. Unit sale price is nothing basic, basically you don't have to go into the factory and find what the dollars a unit sale price go in the whole area factory may not go. Unit sale price का मतलब ये है कि जो cost है आपके पूरे product की उसको total amount से divide करके आप unit sale price निकाल सकते हैं. इसके अलावा month and year manufacturer हमने कहा है कि जो आपका first October से आपने अपनी finance commodity के ऊपर month and year declare करना होगा. Manufacturer का past before and use by date and consumer के details. जो consumer के details हैं ये basically industry के interest में होती हैं कि industry को क्या यदि कहीं कोई problem होती है किसी consumer को तो वो directly जा करके उस industry से बात कर सकता है. Now, for the digital markets, we have simply the rules for the digital markets also that the digital markets or the, the, the digital platforms have to ensure that the required declarations are being good on all the, uh, when the, the product on the digital platform. What are these? Address of the manufacturer, backup name, etc. Country of origin, if important, common of generic name, net quantity, MRP, and that's before or used by date, month, and year for the interest of the consumer. Six times this provision is made for the uh, for the preparation for the to declare these declarations. We have also the rule for declaring the size of the letters and numerals on the prepackaged commodities as per the size of the display 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 panel. If the area is less than 50 square centimeter, size will be 1 mm or 2 mm if it is more. So these are the sizes which are already been defined given under the rules. We have also the provision that once declared the MRP cannot be changed. There cannot be two different MRPs for identical products. So these are the basic provisions which we have under the rules. And then we have this rule for amendment from first to the in November 2021. But it's really now these rules will be implemented from first of October. Under these rules, basically, if you talk about that, the sizes, the prescribed sizes of the lightning commodities. Under second schedule, have been audited. Now, the manufacturer can pack the prepackaged commodity in any size as per his wish. Now, for earlier, it was it's required to declare the one year of manufacture, packer or importer, but it is now only the manufacturer. Similarly, we have also decided that the MRP will be the maximum retail price inclusive of all taxes in Indian currency. So, this is the way these rules have been amended. Similarly, the provision of unit sale price has been introduced under the rules, which will come into force from 1st of October 2022. Under this rule, if the quantity is less than 1 kg, the unit price will be 
per gram. If it is more than one kg, it will be in terms of one kg. Similarly, one liter. Similarly, other units of area and number. There is a provision that if you are selling an alcoholic beverages where the state excise laws are in full, then these rules will not be applicable or the state excise laws rules of that state where they are eating manufacturer will be applicable. Similarly, if it is 1 kg, so unit price and the total price will be the same, so it is not required to be declared. Similarly, the provision for one country is also amended to just safeguard the interest of consumers. And if you see that the, there is one another very important provision, actually this rule was, was supposed to be implemented from 1st of April. So considering the problem of the industry, it has been decided that if, if, if any industry wants to implement this provision of law from 1st of April, they can do, or if somebody wants to do it from 1st of October, they can do from 1st of October and for the event and no prosecution will be brought at the on them. So these are the basic things which we have we have seen about the legal package package from the rules. During the COVID time, the department has issued large number of advisories in the interest of industry and the consumer. For example, the verification mark also, your verification mark also extended time to time with the verification of the ring and measuring instrument in the, including the dispatch units in the interest of the users so that if the user can, is not able to verify its way and measure, the extension can be taken. Similarly, the packaging material, similarly, the lot of, uh, of uh, masks and other medical devices and the pay price shop. So a lot of things were done at that time in the interest of consumers or in the, in the industries. And similarly, I remember that when there was a problem of oxygen concentrator, they are getting the blanket permission that for these months or for some months, you can import the oxygen concentrator without doing any of the legal compliance of the legal requirement. So that in the country, the requirement can be put in or the, the, the equipment can be supplied. So these are the basic things which, which we have. We have all type of testing and calibration facilities in the laboratories. We have right now six regional laboratories, standards laboratories in India. These standard laboratories are available in Manis and Ahmedabad, and all are most welcome to see our facility, what type of facility, road cell, fluid meter, and blood pressure meter, thermometer, what type of facilities we have. You, anybody can see, come and see these facilities. Oh, I would like to request one very important thing which is required, which is being also asked by our honorable Prime Minister, prohibition of single-use plastic. How, how so we can do kindly think of it so that we can also reduce the plastic in the nature. With this much, I would like to thank all of you who are attends, who are linked with us online or offline and listening to us. थैंक यू आशुतोष जी आपने बहुत अच्छा एड्रेस किया और और जो है इस प्रोग्राम से जो है तो आपके सहयोग से आपके क्षेत्र में बहुत से व्यापारी और मैन्युफैक्चरर्स और लीगल मेटलॉजी ऑफिसर्स कंट्रोलर्स अन्य लोग जो है सभी इसे लाभान्वित हुए होंगे हाँ तो नमस्कार साहब जो है तो आ, हमारा ये अनुरोध है कि मेट्रोलॉजी डे को आज आज मेट्रोलॉजी डे को जो है इस कार्यक्रम के खत्म होने के बाद भी जो है किसी न किसी रूप में आगे जो है बढ़ाया जाए और जो आपका ऑब्जेक्टिव है डिजिटल इरा का उसको देश में लाया जाए बिकॉज इट इज द मैटर ऑफ द टेक्नोलॉजी तो जो भी वेट्स एंड मेजर से जुड़े हुए मैन्युफैक्चरर्स हैं उनके इस ऑब्जेक्टिव को जो है लोगों तक पहुँचाया जाए मैक्सिमम जो ये फोटोग्राफ्स हैं उनको जो है अधिक से अधिक मैन्युफैक्चरर्स के यहाँ आप जो है जोड़े और आज ही भेजने की कृपा करेंगे तो बड़ी अच्छी चीज़ होगी और शाम तक जो है मैक्सिमम कितने नंबर जो है आपके साथ प्रोग्राम में लोग जुड़ जाते हैं इसके ऊपर जो है भी बहुत सारा चीज़ डिपेंड करता है कि इंडिया में कितने लोग इस मेट्रोलॉजी uh, डे और डिजिटल इरा के लिए जो है आ, अपने को उससे जोड़ रहे हैं जो है 
तो इन्हीं शब्दों के साथ साथ आपको बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद और आपका प्रयत्न जारी रहे इसके लिए शुभांक्षी हूँ जय धन्यवाद जय
थैंक यू बहुत ही सर आपका यहाँ पर आना हमारे लिए बहुत लगता है जो भी है समापन की ओर जा रहे हैं तो मैं इसमें राजीव मंदिर से करूंगा हाँ इससे पहले मैं यहाँ पर जो उपस्थित हुए हमारे पेट्रोलियम डीलर उनका कोई कंट्रीशन है उनका कोई डिस्कशन है तो प्लीज शेयर भी करें राजू भाई कश्मीर भाई आपका कोई कंफ्यूजन है कोई डिस्कशन है क्योंकि इतना सारा टाइम भी आपको कभी नहीं मिलेगा जो है तेज पर दो टीजिंग में डेली डेली टीजिंग का भी पैसे हैं और साथ में डीएम साहब हैं
गुड सजेशन वेरी गुड
देखने से क्या हुआ एकदम बच्चे भी करने के लिए
जनरल प्रोफेसर के पास गया उन्होंने मुझसे बोला तो तो आई डोंट नो दिस इज अ प्रॉब्लम सॉरी लेट मी प्लीज नो इट इज नॉट अ प्रॉब्लम दे आर नॉट कंप्लीट प्रॉब्लम क्या है इसका मतलब है हर प्रॉब्लम का तीन सॉल्यूशन होने चाहिए एक अच्छा नहीं लगता कर देंगे और आपको ध्यान रखिए कि आपके पास तीन सॉल्यूशन होंगे तो प्रॉब्लम ही रहेगी बेसिक प्लस क्या है यदि आप जैसे इसके बाद भी कोई अपनी बात कहना चाहता है तो कम से कम ये तो कह सकते हैं कि आज का प्रोग्राम अच्छा लगा आपको इतना तो पता चले कि अच्छा भी लगा कि नहीं लगा या हम जबरदस्ती केवल आए और बैठे देखिए आज अच्छी बात की नहीं जो दिल्ली से सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट से जो सीनियर वो अधिकारी है सेकंड सुपर गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया उनके ऊपर तो कोई नहीं है उन्होंने भी आप सब की बात कह दी उसके बाद यूपी के जो स्टेट गवर्नमेंट का प्रोग्राम चल रहा है उसको भी हमने नहीं तो कर दिया आपको कहा तो आप यहां पर बैठ करके टेक्नोलॉजी का एक बहुत बड़ा दिन है जब मैं आपको बताता हूं दिस इज डिजिटल सर्टिफिकेट हम इशू करना शुरू करेंगे हम कहां जाएंगे आप सोचिए अभी तो ये एक दो साल कोविड आया था कोविड का हमें सब सिखाया है कोविड से पहले ये किससे कहते थे ऑनलाइन आ जाना तो हमें बात किस तरह होता था उसको तो समझ में ही आता आवाज से आ रही है और आवाज से और अब सब की समझ आता है और कॉटन की आवाज भी समझ में आ रही है क्या हो जाए क्योंकि आपको आदत पड़ गई अभी उसकी आदत है जिन चीजों की आदत इतनी जल्दी डालेंगे बुरी चीजें उतनी जल्दी हो जाएगी इसके बाद सब सर मैंने आपका बीच में ले लिया आई एम सॉरी सर और किसी तरफ से कोई आज की बात है राठौर साहब ने पहले तो मैं कॉम्पिटिशन देखा फिर ऐसा अच्छा प्रोग्राम ऑर्गेनाइज हुआ और गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया से आठ सौ ढाई सौ बैठे हुए हैं पहले तो ये तोड़ मार था ये मटेरियल तो नहीं था जो बात होगी तो साइंटिफिकली की जो मेजरमेंट की बात है तो बहुत लोगों के नजरिए से बाहर कि इसकी इंपॉर्टेंस क्या है रियल में क्या हमारे लाइफ से कितने में इस बात को जुड़ी हुई है उसकी पूरी हिस्ट्री हमारे पास आई उसका जो मेट्रोलॉजिकल एक्ट की बात है सुना बहुत है लेकिन रियल में क्या बात है कहां से शुरू की गई कथा और कहां फिर होती है अब क्या चल रहा है अभी क्या आने वाला है तो फ्यूचर जो आपने अग्रवाल साहब ने बताया कि अभी डिजिटल में जा रहे हैं डिजिटल सर्टिफिकेट आ रहा है वहां से हमें आगे भी कहा जाना है कंप्लेन तो बहुत रहेगी कंप्लेन के साथ उसका सुझाव की जो उन्होंने बात कही और पॉजिटिव एटमोस्फेयर जो बन रहा है हमारी अगली बेटी जो आ रही है वो भी सोचेगी कि जो गलतियां वहां हुई है आगे वाले पीढ़ी ने जो की है अब हमें नहीं करना है समय के बता जा समय की जो बात है वो समय बता रहा है कि नाउ वी हैव टू इंप्रूव आवर सिस्टम कि जो सिस्टम सुधार की बात है जहां जरूरत है वहां कैसे सुधार किया जाए ये सब पूरा डिस्कस हुआ है ध्यान से हमें मोटिवेशन मिला है में आने वाला समय है ये समय हम कर सकता है चेंज नहीं हो पाए चेंज ऑफकोर्स रेजिस्टेंट होता है लेकिन चेंज इज मस्ट और चेंज ऑफ इज समय की बात होती है जैसे बात में और हम लोगों ने जो नेशनल लेवल पे ये 